Hi guys, I'm Max, founder of Shipfast. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I scale my fitness app to over 20,000 users and 400 paying subscribers. So here's the website, you can check it out. This is the landing page, 10K downloads on Google Play, 4.8 reviews and 300 reviews. And also this is the Australian version. Basically you can see you've got 10 reviews with 4.9 rating. And then basically we have over 10,000 users on iOS as well. And yeah, so basically this is app. So I'm gonna take you through how exactly I went step by step from validating, building, and launching this app. So yeah, let's get started. So the first step before I start building anything was to validate my idea. So this is like the most important or crucial step before you build any software. So there's two ways I use to validate my idea. So one is through survey and second is through landing page. Let me walk you through what I mean. So survey, that's pretty simple to understand. Basically, I create a survey on Google Forms, if you can see. So I ask people basically how many times they train in the gym, what's the goal in the gym, what's the biggest challenge to face when training in the gym as a beginner, and also ask some questions regarding their meal plan. So I just want to understand the frustrations in the gym or how can we make the gym experience better. And basically I did this survey, so I found out that most people, the biggest struggle they have is to stick to a plan and also get a workout plan that is tailored to their gym's equipment. Because a lot of workout plans that are provided in the app is not tailored to their gym equipment, so they want something that's fully tailored to them. So that's one of the pain points I found. And then basically I kind of validated they have some sort of need so after I've done the survey, I want to test the idea in the real world. So basically I create a simple landing page with bubble.io and then basically ran some Facebook ads to the landing page. We had around 30% conversion rate to join the waitlist. So that means every 100 visitors to our landing page, 30 of them actually converted to join the waitlist. So the validation process for me is pretty simple, which is basically conduct the survey, understand people's pain points, and then create a landing page based on the pain points we have discovered and test it in the real environment and see how many people want a product like this. And because I see a lot of demand for this app, so, and then I just start building the app. So now let's actually talk about building the app. I guess a lot of you guys are probably asking why I didn't use Flutterflow. There's actually a couple of reasons. So first, let me explain to you my tech stack and then I'll cover the question regarding why I didn't use Flutterflow. So first of all, obviously I use Bubble, the best no-code tool out there. So you can build full stack no-code web apps on Bubble. Basically I built the app version on Bubble and then I use a service called Natively to convert the app into an iOS and Android mobile native app. The reason I didn't choose Flutterflow and use Natively to convert my Bubble app into a native app is because in Natively, I actually had the option to sync Apple Health and Apple Sleep data in. So because I'm building a fitness app and Apple Health, they have a lot of data about the user regarding the health situation. So that's really important for me to understand and to track the user information and also to provide them with personalized workout plans. So that's why I choose natively with Bubble. By far it's been really great. I was being able to get all the user data of the previous exercise so I can tailor the next rep and next weight they should do with certain exercise. So that's kind of like my tech stack. So now let's talk about launch. So for launching an app, there are actually three channels I use the most to get traction. So one's Reddit, one's Facebook groups, and another one's Facebook ads. So let's start with Reddit. So in Reddit, I went into around eight or 10 community that's all fitness related. And I started a post such as, tell me your fitness goal, I'll give you a workout plan. So this one got unfortunately got deleted, but this post got around 33,000 views. So basically around 200 comments. So for each comment, I just provide them with a workout plan and also plug my product. So with these type of posts here, as you can see, I get a couple thousand views, 33,000 views, and I was able to validate the idea furthermore and also got my first users. So the second thing I did is to go to Facebook groups and provide valuable content. So for example, this group. I joined this group and start posting in there. As you can see, I've been co posting consistent valuable content such as how to do supersets. This was able to get me some users and also basically help me to promote my app, as you can see here. So that's really nice. That's where also another channel I got my users on. So the last channel will be Facebook ads. 
So Facebook ads has been working really well for me because I know some marketing with Facebook ads. This is where I get most of my paid users from because I'm targeting, for example, the big, big five countries such as US and UK, Australia. And also, as you can see, I was one of the originators of the Reddit ad creatives. So this did really well for me. This bought me around like 200 paid subscribers alone. So a lot of people might tell you don't run ads for your app which is not sustainable, it's not good for the long term. But in reality, most of the big apps such as Better Me, MyFitnessPal are running thousands of ads on TikTok, Facebook. Because for B2C apps, we need scale and more number of users we have, the more profit we're gonna make. It's not with B2B where you can have 10 customers uh, is set. So as long as you're making a profit from your ads, then ads is definitely a great option for consumer apps. So regarding my marketing channel, a lot of you guys probably also ask why I don't do any original content marketing. So we have tried that with FitSize. So as you can see some video, we got like 200K views, for example, 190K views. But in reality is most of these users will never turn into paid subscribers. So I actually tested multiple different marketing channels, including YouTube, Pinterest, also Instagram, TikTok, I found out the best way to actually get paid users is through ads or basically through referrals of your existing users. So that's why we kind of stop focusing on content marketing. Basically, it's a vanity metric for us because always be careful. You might get a lot of views, but how many of them are actually converting into a paying customer? That's a real question you should ask about. So here is a quick summary. Always validate before you start building your app. And second is with no code, you can actually build scalable apps. Forget all these gurus telling you, you cannot build a big app with no code. Obviously 20,000 users is not as big, but it's still a demonstration of how powerful these no code tools are because I have like thousands of daily active users and they never find a problem with my app and my tech stack. And also the last one is marketing channel doesn't matter as long as you're making a profit. So the last one is marketing channel doesn't matter as long as you're making a profit. So any marketing channel is a good marketing channel if you can make money from it. After all the testing, we discovered Reddit and Facebook ads are the best channel for us. That's why we focus more time on that. And yeah, so that's it. Basically this video showed you how I built my fitness app to over 20,000 users. You can do it too. Just follow me for more no-code tutorials. Thanks.